Welcome to CP Voice. Today's guest needs no introduction. If you attend a church with Christian contemporary music, you're sure to have sung at least one of his songs. He's here today to talk about his brand new album, Love Ran Red. Please welcome the multi-platinum selling, Grammy Award winning, Chris Tomlin. Thanks, welcome Benny. to the studio. Thanks, man. It's a pleasure to have you. Nice to be here. I've been, been loving your music for so long. Thank you, man. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to be here. Yeah. So Love Ran Red is the new record. Yeah, it is. So wh what's the inspiration behind that title? Love Ran Red, it was, uh, you know, it's probably the, center, the song that is kind of the centerpiece of the album is called At the Cross, and it's one of the lyrics, and if, if you see the title, At the Cross, there's parentheses, Love Ran Red, because there's this um, lyric in the song that I just feel like is maybe one of the, uh, I think it's just a beautiful lyric. It just says, where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you, and I think it's a beautiful picture um, of the gospel, really. It's a simple way of sharing the gospel. Love ran red. Those three words are, they're very intriguing. I think that even someone who's like, what is that? Even somebody who may have seen on a shelf or, and not really um, maybe tracking with Jesus or tracking with the gospel, like, love ran red. That's interesting. But what we're talking about is obviously the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, where, uh, you know, the most basic things for God so loved the world, He gave His only Son. And that, that's, that's kind of where the, this title comes from. And the red's a powerful color that catches people's eye. Yeah. See that, is that on the shelf? Yeah, you see the red, and you're like, yeah. And I, think it, and I think once you dig deeper and like start going, what is, what is that? I think you realize, wow, you know. So what was different about the process of making this record as opposed to some of your previous albums? Um, you know, the, the process for me has been a lot the same. One of the things is um, the producer, Ed Cash, who produced this, has started since 2004, since we made Arriving, um, the, the album called Arriving. We've, we've made most of our records together, and so making this record with, again with him, and the purpose has been the same. You know, it's like I, I wasn't really going, okay, I want to make this different record. I want to I do something, uh, some kind of new music. And for me, uh, which makes interviews kind of boring, because you're like, well, what's different? And what's... What is the same is the, is the heart is that I'm trying, to, I'm trying to write songs that are, that give voice to people to worship God, songs for the church, songs that are accessible, songs that are, are, are simple in nature that people can play and sing and they, they translate well to people. You know, I, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm thinking about songs, when I'm thinking about a record, I'm, I'm thinking about the people. I'm not thinking about just me, the artist, trying to make this art. I'm, trying to, I'm thinking about people and how does this translate? How does this translate to a little a little uh, church out in the middle of uh, mid-America. Maybe they don't have all the lights and the band and everything, but is this a song they can sit at the piano and play? And, and so that's what I'm looking for, you know? And when, and when I make a record like Love Ran Red, you may see 12 tracks on there, but for every track, there was probably three or four songs that didn't make it. You know, it's not like we're just trying to find, the, find 12 songs. We, right. Every song is poured over, and, and, you know, and we worked so hard. It's probably seven months we worked on this album. And that's a long time because you can make a record in a month if you want. So we really took a lot of time making this process. So when you write music, do you purposely write them as worship songs or do they, or you just write them and people take them and turn them into worship songs? No, no, How does that work? That's a great question, man. It's t completely purposeful. Um, I've tried to write other music. I've tried to like, oh, I'll just write just some, and I have no passion for it. I'm always thinking of, um, you know, is this sing is it singable? And I don't, I don't even know how to define that. I don't know how to tell somebody this is how you write a singable melody. It just, it seems that that's just the way I'm wired. But I've always come across, I've always tried to, when I think about the songs, is is try to write it in a way that's re really simple and singable to people. And so that is. Um, so that that's where it starts and that's where it ends for me and 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 the greatest thing that can happen is for a church to pick it up and start singing it that's the best because there's a part of there's a time when a song that the goal to me is when a song becomes unattached to me I, I like to say it so it's no longer oh that's a Chris Tomlin song mm -hmm. that it's it's no this is a song we sing at church you right. know I think about I mean I think about the song uh, I think about some of the great hymns amazing grace you don't no one sits there and sings Amazing Grace and thinks, oh, that's a John Newton song. No. Yep. You think that's a, You're right. <laughs> you think, man, that's the song I sing at my church. That is, that's, that's the fabric of my life. This is church. And for me, that's the, that's the goal. Is like if the songs can go past me and just become songs that people sing, that's, that's beautiful. You wouldn't even know unless you did a little, uh, a little research on the topic right, to right. find out who the actual writer or singer was. Right, and that's, and that's how it started for me. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, that maybe people have come to know my music um, in the last few years, but for, for the longest time, I've been out this for 20 years, and for the la longest time, it was just 
people, I was just chasing my songs around. These songs had made their way in the church. No one knew who I was. I would come and sing songs. They're like, oh, you sing those songs that we sing in our church. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, I, I wrote some of those songs. <laughs> they probably didn't even realize no, it at yeah, the time. Yeah. Yep. So the fact that so many Christians sing your, sing your music across the country, across the world, does that put pressure on you when you write lyrics <laughs> to not write, want to write the wrong thing oh, yeah, or yeah, theologically it's, sound? Yeah, you don't want to throw heresy to the world, do you? I mean, yeah. And that's why I think, for me, a lot of the songs, especially the ones that have, have any kind of longevity, that have, that have really gone um, further than me, uh, have really come from the scriptures. I, mean, the, I'm, I find something, that, and I find that's the best way. You know, if you're, why don't you just sing something about whatever God's already written about himself? Let's just sing that. You know, because then you know you're singing, you were singing the word of God. And I think a lot of times when in, in the lyrics of my song, people are singing God's word, and they don't even know it. And because uh, I think it's got a catchy melody, and they're like, oh, I love this. And they may not, not realize that for most of these songs, they're singing so much of, so much of uh, the Word of God. And, and that's, that's a good way of, of just keeping in check, of making sure that I'm singing and writing the right things. I mean, I think it's so good because I do feel that pressure because I'm like, wow, well, I, what a responsibility. I take it as a great responsibility of like that these songs that are going out, they, they've, got, I've always, they've got to be something that people sh uh, you know, need to say and can say and should say to God. And because... I think people learn about God so much is through the music, and so I definitely I take it so seriously about you know, what am I saying in these songs. So have you ever thought about making a different kind of album? <laughs> I don't know, maybe singing about cars or a football <laughs> game or something, I don't know. You know, yeah, I grew up on country music, man, yeah. so uh, that's how I learned to play, and I've always thought about, oh, I'm going to make a country record, I'll make country music, and I, I like to write those songs, but... It's so just you not, have written those songs? I have written them, and I don't know if they're any good. But recorded uh, or just written? No, 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 not recorded. Okay. Um, but I don't, I don't have a passion for it. End of the day, I love it, but like when I sit down and the songs that I really feel drawn towards are these songs that come out in a record like Love Ran Red. It's just kind of the way I guess I was wired, you know? So obviously the Holy Spirit, Jesus, are your main inspirations. But I mean, as far as other artists, hymn writers, you know, who, 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 who inspires Chris Tomlin? And I uh, honestly... Um, the, the strength of this music in the last five or six years has come from a group of guys that we write together and it's we're like-minded and a lot of people will know these guys um, Matt Redman, Matt Redman yeah, of course. Matt Marr, Jason Ingram, Ed Cash, Jonas Meyer and some of these names you may know some you don't all these guys are, so, are behind so much of my music and we set out we're intentional we set out we, we calendar off days they said, we're getting together here, and we get together in a room and pray and ask God for songs. And they are inspiration to me, these guys. They, who, they are inspiring me in so many different ways and, um, and challenge. And we throw out different songs, and we pray for God to give us songs for His church. And that's where, so when people say, you know, where are these songs coming from? And what's, what's inspiring this? It's, it's really us together as, uh, um, as these guys that causes, I think, the strength in the music. Iron and shop and iron, almost. Yes, very much so. That's great. Yeah. Well, great answer, Chris, and I appreciate you coming in. Hey, thanks, man. It's great having you. Nice to be with you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Love Ram Red is available in stores and on iTunes. If you have any questions or inquiries, email us at cpvoice at christianpost.com. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Chris Tomlin is a laid-back artist whose personality is humble and inviting. His music easily translates to most Christians. He's also pretty honest when answering questions about writing music and strives to make songs that allow people to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth.
<laughs> Too kind. Too kind.